just to say that I too have been in this predicament and I've had to arise above it and I had to go against a lot of things. I've lost jobs, I've lost relationships, business relationships, employment relationships, all those different things based on our identity and based on our perspective. So you think that the art is diverse than you do work, the workmanship too yeah, as well. He, he's, he's got like no matter whatever reason that they make me that it's like not right for the whole entire like we all deserve that and when we do it right here we start coming together and move on one accord with one specific goal in mind, we make change. So I commend you all right now for what you're doing. You know, we made small individuals by ourselves, but we are really a massive force when we come together. And this has been proven time after time. And you guys you know, are you know what doesn't fit? He doesn't have that any fire. Me right now. And I love He's you all. Like, and I good thank life. you for right now for inviting me here and allowing me to speak with you all. And I ask that you please just keep up all the hard work and to stay encouraged. Thank you. Okay, I want to have uh, Bobby Penner come up. Uh, Bobby Penner is organizing the Collectivo Union. Uh, so he's going to share some of his experiences. Uh, how's it going, y'all? I want to thank the Unemployed Council, the Wisconsin Bell, the People's Movement, uh, and all the other uh, individuals and organizations and unions that are here today. Uh, it really is a beautiful day. It's like every day is to, to support unions, to support workers. Uh, I've been organizing with the uh, Colectivo Collective. Uh, I'm on the volunteer organizing committee with them, but I've been organizing with them for actually one year now, uh, one whole year. Um, and I was fired in October, but I, I still continue organizing with them because it, it's, it's crucially important. Um, so when, when uh, you know, when, when we were organizing with Colectivo and we, we continue to experience this, we've experienced massive retaliation uh, from, from the company, from this small business, this small regional business that exists in Milwaukee and Madison and Chicago. Um, they hired a union busting firm uh, that trained, that, you know, held captive audience meetings and trained them, the, the owners and the management, of how to uh, dissuade workers and coerce workers away from uh, supporting the union, joining the union, voting yes for the union. Um, and, you know, that's that's just a small picture of what a, a, a small company, a small regional company can do. So I can't imagine the kind of propaganda that is being thrown at the, the Amazon workers, not only in Besmer, but Amazon workers all over the country. You know, you have the richest man in the world, right. a billionaire, a multi-billionaire, he's got all these resources at his disposal analytic resources, human resources that he can uh, mobilize in order to dissuade people from joining the union in Vespa and from trying to unionize in, in other Amazon plants like in Florida and Georgia and Iowa where they're also trying to uh, unionize right now. So it's just, you know, they have these massive resources that they can throw at workers to try and, and break down the idea that they can make their, that we workers can make our own lives better through organizing. But we can't. And we don't have all that money. We don't have all that wealth. We don't have all those resources. What we have is solidarity. That's and right. we say this word over and over again, solidarity, solidarity. What does that mean when we're saying it in this context? When we're talking about workers' movements all over the world. It means that coffee workers in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, recognize that they have more in common with Amazon workers at Besmer, Alabama than they do with the capitalist bosses that own the company. We don't have anything in common with Jeff Bezos. I don't even have anything in common with the Colectivo owners. Multi-millionaires who are building new houses and still claim that they don't have enough money to uh, keep the business afloat if it unionizes. It's bullshit. That's right. And not only is it between coffee workers and, and Amazon workers, but it, it, it's all workers across borders. It means 
that we have solidarity and we recognize that we have a shared mutual interest with copper miners in Zambia and IT workers in Thailand and healthcare workers in Sri Lanka and cocoa farmers in West Africa all over the world. That's right. Workers have a shared interest because what we do is we produce all the wealth in society. We make society run every single day. We produce everything that we need to survive. All of it. And guess what? The people that own those companies, we don't need them. They need us. They need us to run the machines, to deliver the packages, to pour the coffee. But we don't need them. We could do that all without them. That's right. right. Because like the sign says, workers make the world run, so workers should run the world. Yeah. And that, what the fuck was that? Um, <laughs> he's on some other shit. Um, and, and, and so that's, that's what solidarity means. It means that we all recognize that we have a shared collective interest to come together, to fight for unions, to fight for workers' rights, to fight for a worker-controlled economy and a worker-controlled society. We don't need the capitalists. We don't need the bosses. We can do everything that we need and produce everything that we need ourselves. So I want to uh, wrap up by saying um, the Colectivo union vote is happening right now. It finishes at the end of next week. And we really need a final push to, to, to you know, let, let the Colectivo workers know that the community stands behind them, That's that right. the union is what is necessary in order to improve wages, improve staffing, improve working conditions at Colectivo. So go to your local cafe, order your coffee, Union Yes, and um, you know Prospect Cafe is, is right down there. It's not open right now, but that's where they held all the union busting meetings here in Milwaukee. Um, I don't know actually if it is open right now. Maybe it is. I don't, I don't know. But go to your local Colectivo cafe. Order your coffee, Union Yes. Give some encouragement to the people there. They need it. They've been intimidated. They've been violated. They've, they've been railed against in emails and different, different forms of anti-union discourse. And so we need it. So um, I just want to say solidarity forever. And now we really know what solidarity means. It means that we all have this shared collective interest. That's and we right. recognize and we feel right here in our hearts. That's right. So thank you all for being here. Solidarity with the, the Amazon workers and solidarity with workers everywhere. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. And yeah, it's not just us. We're seeing all these cars drive by honking in support. Uh, this isn't a small thing. Just because you see a handful of us here, that doesn't mean we're the only ones that support that. That just means we were the ones who were able to make it out here today. There are so many people who are stuck at home, stuck at work, who feel this solidarity. And they're with us in spirit, in their heart, and they know that we are fighting for a better future where the workers have more control. Um, so now I want to bring up uh, my friend Sam. Sam is with the uh, Captel Union, Organize Union, Union Organizers, um, and he's going to share some of his thoughts and experiences. All right, here we go. Hello, folks. I'm Sam. I'm a Captel employee. I'm a member of the Captel Workers Union. A member of the PSL, that's the Party for Socialism and Liberation. And I'm out here today, I'm standing here because I want everybody to know that we stand with Amazon workers. And I also want to give some thoughts on this situation. So, you know, I know that by being here, we're not making the real physical change that we want to happen in this world. We're standing out here because we want to make our voices heard. We're standing out here in the silly hope that by making our voices heard, we're pushing the world in the right direction. But when we want to make real change, it doesn't come from me here with a microphone. It comes from your workplace, from your neighborhood, and it comes when we challenge the existing power structures of our society. And if those power structures don't behave the way that we need them to, and the way that the world needs them to, then we have to build a replacement. That's right. We need to challenge ourselves to fully understand the conditions of our society and realize our whole potential as human beings. This picket is in support of Amazon workers giving a un creating a union, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that particular issue. 
fact is that most of the workers that I hope to reach today, they're too busy or they're too tired to actually come out here and hear what I have to say. Workers, uh, I know this because I myself felt too tired to come out here today, but I did it anyway because I know that this is important. All workers have in common in the United States, in the world, the need to work for a private company in order to sustain their lives. Most of us work for a private company, which is an autocracy that determines the conditions of our employment. It's an autocracy because leaders are appointed to fill positions. They're not democratically decided upon. You don't get to choose your boss. You don't get to choose who will supervise your work. Private companies are autocratic. They decide the conditions that you work under. You don't get a say on what those conditions are or how they're enforced. And these companies, they may have to follow a set of rules set by the state, by the federal Wisconsin governments, but that does very little to prevent them from walking all over their employees. Unions are the only form of democracy that can keep the autocratic rule of private companies in check. That's right. right. Emphasis on can. Most unions are weak. They don't stand strong with the interests of the workers. Most unions function like an annoying middleman between you and the managers. They don't actually stand with workers. And when workers have an issue, these unions dampen the workers' ability to stand up for themselves. But if we want to make companies like Amazon and Walmart behave the way that we need them to, if we're going to challenge these monopolistic autocracies and the way they tread on their employees, on us workers, we're going to need unions, strong unions. We need to put maximum pressure on them to stand up for workers when workers' rights are under attack. That's right. When unions exist, workers need to put pressure on them to strike when conditions become unbearable. Us workers need to put pressure on these unions and exercise our worker power in order to keep these unions fighting on our side. They won't do it on their own just because they're existing. Uh, all of the power in a union comes from the workers supporting that union. We need to make unions our own, not someone else's union. We need to make unions our own and nothing less. Now, I support the Amazon workers, and I hope that the Amazon union is able to realize better conditions for Amazon workers. I hope that the Amazon workers will realize that their power lies in the collective mass of workers. And I hope that they will realize that as a collective, as a mass of workers, they hold the power and they have more power than Amazon does. By standing out here giving this speech, I may or may not actually make that happen. By standing out here picketing, we may or may not actually be doing all that we can to build workers' democracy in the United States. But what I do know is that this demonstration is good, and if you are here, your heart is in the right place. We are on the right side of history, and we must continue to fight on the side of the people for as long as necessary. Uh, you know, a, a business school that's worth at least, uh, that's going to cost them at least $50 million, right? That's right. 
the priorities of the administration are not our priorities. We need to make, we need to put a constraint on their behavior that, that allows our interest to come to the floor. Uh, and that's what we're doing here, right? Is as workers standing together, we can we can we can put a constraint on the behavior of our bosses, right? They need us, but they don't. Uh, but as individuals, we can do nothing, right? Um, another example of this, right? The, uh, Jeff Bezos, uh, in the midst of the first nine months of the uh, the stimulus, I'm sorry, of the uh, of the COVID uh, COVID crisis, made 60 billion dollars. This fell from 120 billion to 180 billion dollars during that time. And that's no accident. Right, well, we got two, three measly checks. The federal government gave uh, gave big business nine trillion dollars of aid to buy off bad corporate debt. Right, that's where his that's where his profit is coming from. We have to stand with the uh, with the workers' investment because this is our only chance to push back against that sort of hegemony. We have uh, we have the chance to to unionize the logistical center of this nation. The strategic influence of this fight could not be greater, and I'm so proud to be out here with you all today uh, to fight for the best of the world. Thank you. are 